We have prenatal care and they counsel, counsel us. But I was really unhappy and I just wanted to go home to my family. And I, every time I called and pleaded with my family, please let me come home, they wouldn't let me. So I talked to his, my boyfriend's mother and she allowed me to come to her house. So I left the maternity hospital and went to her house. And she was wonderful with me. She taught me how to cook. She taught me how to clean. She accepted me as her daughter. But her son didn't want the baby. He didn't want me there. So he was very abusive. He beat me up with black eyes and all that. And, but I was determined to have my baby. And the family's issue with me was always, what's a girl with a ninth grade education gonna do with the baby? How were we were gonna be able to live? Well, I, it turned out that I spent 25 years at one job. Bernardo Foods. And it was the longest employment history in my whole family. We were shunned by our, our family. We weren't treated the same. We struggled. We didn't eat sometimes, but we made it. And even though my son was not wanted by my parents, was not wanted by his own father, I swore I would never walk away from my children. And I never did. I stood by them through thick and thin. And when I moved to Merced, I went to work at the Alpha Pregnancy Center because I thought with my story and how I survived, I, if I could help one girl make a decision to either keep her baby or put her baby up for adoption as an alternative to abortion, then I was successful. And the most successful thing I've ever done was to keep my son without the help of my family or my boyfriend. So when you think about the theme of the night, the theme is make her brave. And to be brave is to be ready to face or endure danger or pain or showing courage which means that you are ready to face difficulty even though they may be afraid. That is the courageous. Usually we save that kind of definition for like our first responders, our police force, our firemen, our military, those that just go forward and put their lives on the line for other people. A lot of times we wouldn't use that term for a 15-year-old unmarried pregnant girl. But we have to ask ourselves, was that woman courageous? Was she brave? You know, and, you know, even though maybe the parents didn't help her, the boyfriend didn't help her, and that child was born and, you know, without the father wanting him or, you know, the family wanted him, somebody did want him. God wanted him. And God had a purpose for that little boy. And, you know, that little boy became a young man who had struggles, Made difficult, made it a difficult life for himself, but God still had a plan for him. You know, God had a plan for him to grow up, become a man, become a pastor, and help other people find God through his life. And if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm that pastor. My name is Pastor Ruben. And the woman in that video was my mother. And of course, I want to thank her for being brave. 
or else I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be able to work with great people at the church and just to be a part of this great organization. You know, a lot of times when we take in a young woman, you know, you know, we don't know what God has in store for that child through that young woman. You know, it's Psalm 139, verse 15 and 16. It says, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in that secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body and all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So even before I, one day of me came to be, God already had a plan for me. And that plan for me would not have been able to happen had she not been brave and had she not had women to come into her life to help her be brave. That's what all of you do when you donate to an organization like this. My mom, my mom, my wife, Debbie, all the volunteers are there to support the young women just like my mom. So that way God can use those children in ways we don't even know yet. So I just want to say a special thank you to my mom. Thank you to this organization and God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Missing a few folks 
Because you picked up the tab for them and decided to be extra generous. So thank you for those who decided to be a little extra generous. We're going to get this party started. DJ, hit me in three, two, one. Okay, take it three. Let's go. Let's go. 
stiff on me out the way. Table 36. Jordan, you better get something. Because that medicine man, he's not playing. Okay, 36 on the dash. That's a dash if I've ever seen one. Table 14. Join the party, Luke. Come on, brother. Let's go. Let's go. With humility. What would you get, brother? Chocolate silk. Chocolate silk. My wife calls me that sometimes, just a little clear, okay? All right, hey, table 41, table 41. How are we doing, table 41? Look at the chaos, I love it. Security, please, security. Table 32. Come on, 32, dash it out. It's good. You guys are great dashers, and you're already, you're diving in. You enjoying it? What'd you get? Coconut lime. Coconut lime. Ooh, that would have been a good one. Table 28. Table 28. That's a dash if I've seen one. Good job. That's good. Let's make it real interesting with calling over table number one. Let's go. What are we going to do here? We got a few more. Table 39 is next. Debbie, what kind of cake do you think your table is going to get? What you guys have your eyes on? Table 39. Oh, she's walking. Okay, Miss Dallas, we'll walk a little authority over there, okay? Table number six. Dash on over, table number six. Nice, that's our, that's our orchestra table over there. Table 26. Table 26. All right, we got a little dasher in the house. Look at him. He's going for it. Okay, table 33. Table 33. It's not over to look over, everybody. Come on, can we give him a round of applause? Can we just clap right now for everybody dashing? It gets harder as the game goes on. There's not as many options. Okay, table number 37. There are two numbers left. Two numbers left for 37. How about table seven? Table seven. And table, last but not least, table four. Table four in the house. Good job. Nice. How's that dessert? Hey, man. Don't it taste a little better when you were just a little jitter and sweat? Hey, man. Well, thank you, Jesus. Now, we do want you to know that we do have just a few more desserts than we do tables. What does that mean for you? That means that if you already have a dessert at your table, no, yeah, this is not like elephant. We're not stealing. Some of these desserts are gone. Like if you wanted table eight dessert, I'm sorry, it's gone. Table eight's not trading. But we do have some desserts left, and what we wanted to do is let you know that we did have more people donate cakes and pies than we did have tables. And so what we would like for you to do is to consider, you know what, this cake is good, but, you know, for maybe another $25, I'm going to another cake and take it home with my friends and family. So we want you to know that those cakes are available for you. We'd appreciate that if you pray over that. But for here on out, we're going to keep the gallon going. Thank you so much for participating in the dessert dash.
in the space of about 10 or 15 minutes, we raised $13,859 from Thank you. So three months ago at the center, we were preparing for a night of rage by a pro-abortion group called James Revenge. Every pro-life pregnancy center in America was threatened with vandalism and firebombs and worse if we did not close our doors. But because you cared and you rose to the challenge and you said, not on my watch, in between making security upgrades, I asked God to confuse, frustrate, reroute, and derail the plans of the ungodly. Some of you came to the center and we spent the night in the parking lot to discourage any potential vandals, and it worked. Thank you. We prayed for pregnancy centers, and guess how God answered our prayers? That night, only one pregnancy center in the country was hit. Between May and July, approximately 50 to 60 pregnancy centers and churches were vandalized, but in those communities, God's people showed up to help clean up and rebuild. In 2021, across our country, there were 800 abortion clinics. And in 2021, across our country, there were between 2,500 and 3,000 pregnancy centers. That's like three times as many. Our opponents hate it that in America there are more pregnancy centers than there are abortion clinics. So we praise God for this. It is a new era in pro-life work. Abortion pills are available online without the, the requirement to see a medical professional. Women know it's a baby, but they still want an abortion. And last month, we saw our first transgender client. With every abortion, there are three victims. Abortion is a huge issue that affects us more than we realize, individuals, communities, and our culture. Abortion increases substance abuse, it negatively influences relationships, mental and emotional health, mental and emotional health, and spiritual health, because women think that God will never forgive them for killing their baby. We're being desensitized in accepting the idea that an unborn baby or a child is not only inconvenient, but it's disposable. California is in the farther away from the truth. Proposition 1, the right to reproductive freedom amendment, is on the November ballot in our state. This constitutional right slash freedom will define California as an abortion sanctuary state, and abortion will become protected by our state constitution. And there are many pro-abortion bills being passed in Sacramento this summer. John Wayne said, courage is being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, you make her brave, every woman who comes to our center. We thank you. Because of you, she is not alone as she navigates her pregnancy and parenting journey. Because you give to meet Alpha's needs, we are able to give to meet these women's needs during their pregnancy to show them that they are stronger and braver and more loved than they can even imagine. It's up to God's people, the body of Christ, his church to keep our local pregnancy center open and operational. Being a voice for the most vulnerable in our country, our state, and our community, this pleases God and this is kingdom work. This past year we saw 522 new clients. We saw 11 clients make a salvation decision. We shared the gospel 197 times. And life-affirming concepts were shared in client conversations 2,158 times. This summer we hired two new nurses. 
This coming Monday, our new ultrasound machine for the mobile clinic will be delivered. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> And on Monday, we start a full week of hands-on sonography training for our new nurses. After our mobile clinic being in storage for over two years, we're looking at taking it back out on the road this fall. Hopefully next month. Tonight, unfortunately, we won't be doing a live ultrasound because our mobile clinic driver moved to Arizona. I asked God over and over again, does he have to move to Arizona? But, so, we do have an ultrasound of an actual client to watch instead. Oh, oh wow! You want a good pick right there. Introducing our special speaker, 
who has been a champion for the unborn, and also, by the way, for the born. She actually has a book that she published uh, for, uh, that came out against infanticide uh, many years ago. Uh, and so she's been a proponent for life in all different directions. She's been doing a lot of different work with the pro-life movement over the years. Uh, for a time, she was working with United for Life, the national organization. Uh, she was educational outreach for them. She also was on the board of CareNet, which is the uh, national organization uh, of pregnancy centers. Uh, she was the chair of the board uh, in, starting in 2003, and then she was appointed president of CareNet uh, in 2008. She retired from CareNet in 2013, but she's continued her work. She is currently serving as president of the Gateway Pregnancy Center in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, in addition to her much work that she's done hands-on and in helping administrate and do other things uh, in the, uh, with pregnancy centers and in the pro-life movement. Uh, she's also been an author. I already mentioned one of her books. She's also written various essays relating to pro-life issues. And she has four children, one of which we're going to see in this video that we're going to show you right now. So go ahead and play the video. I'm 27 and I'm pregnant with our first child. And so I meet these families, these amazing families with children with Down syndrome. Thinking, hmm, a baby with Down syndrome. That's something I would never expect. And two and a half months later, our first child, Will Delahoy, was born with Down syndrome. Well, let's see. First of all, you It's called for, um, William. Well, I'm on the computer. Um, I'm one of the unconscious swimmers, and I've been doing fighting for more than 22 years. Makes me feel um, great at, at the end. And today he has two dogs, and he swims, and he plays basketball. But we're the ones that have the great life because of Will. I'll have to say it's been a nice, long, loving relationship. She's my um, real mom. She does a lot for me. I do a lot for her. And from the bottom of my heart, I think I um, love it so much. Sure, there's challenges. When you have just the cold, hard facts, and you haven't held your baby yet, that's so different than when your baby's born. And all those statistics and all those cold, hard facts are so secondary to that baby you have. Because I know that a lot of moms are scared. I just want them to know that the Lord will always um, give them hope. I'm Melinda. I'm the president of CareNet, and I believe that every life is beautiful. Right here and beyond. 
It's people to people in their own community. Just like all politics is local, so is all ministry local. And I can see from the energy and the love and the responses tonight that this is a community who is ready to take on this battle in the valley in California. And I look at all the national stats, I see everything going on. Yes, even if abortion becomes codified in California, it's already a sanctuary state. It's already a sanctuary state. And that is what you can change. What Debbie mentioned tonight about advertising for the abortion-determined woman, any pregnancy center in the country can do that. It involves Google AdWords, it involves making that a strategic priority that you have to reach the abortion-minded woman and not only bring her through your doors, but catch her online before she purchases the abortion pill. The majority of abortions in our country right now are done by the abortion pill. And it happens like this. A young woman goes online, She's scared, she's pregnant, she wants that abortion pill. She goes online and she looks for phrases like abortion symptoms, need an abortion now, abortion information, and up will come automatically Planned Parenthood and all of the anti-life organizations that are performing abortion. But we have that same opportunity to come up right with them. For our centers in Raleigh, we place in the top three positions with AdWords, like I've just explained to you, 80% of the time. If we can reach her, we can find her first before she gets that abortion pill. But as an organization, you all will probably be adjusting priorities and raising funds for that type of initiative. But what Debbie's brought to you tonight is exactly, exactly what's needed for you to become the kind of center with all the love and care you already have that is driving abortion-determined women to you. We know what to do with a woman who's facing abortion. We know how to talk to her and listen to her and understand her and help lead her through the ways that she might be able to keep her baby and have a life for herself and her unborn child. I, I know that you all know what to do in this center, but the issue for us right now is finding her first. And I know that you're going to be talking about initiatives in the future, but if, if all of our national experts were to look at you right now, they would say, oh my goodness, you're in the Central Valley the Central San Joaquin Valley in California. Most people, I live in North Carolina, believe me, most people in North Carolina think California is the Bay Area and Los Angeles and it's all gone already. So that is not the case though. The biggest group of people is throughout the length and breadth of this state and they are not pro-abortion. And that is where you need to go and you're going already with your mobile unit with everything that you have, if you were to add the kind of advertising that Debbie's talking about and opened up an initiative to reach the most abortion-minded woman, there is no law allowing abortion that can overcome that. Because we have learned through the last 30 years in particular that she is on her phone, online, and then can immediately have a conversation with her. And that's what we need to do. We want to be the first one to have a conversation with her. Whether it's a telehealth conversation, or it's a text, or it's come bringing her into the center. All these things are working in our favor to reach that young woman. And that, it just, I cannot tell you what it means to be, to be in a center that's so lively and it's very own kind of center in which said, but yet is thinking strategically about what's coming ahead and what's before us. The, the Roe v. Wade decision, I've never talked like this at a banquet before. The Roe v. Wade decision and the overturning of that decision 
was a great victory and a courageous victory. But it was really just one step. One step that showed us that life can win. That courageous Supreme Court justices will make the right decision. And it opened up the doors for us to think bravely, to think wisely, and to think audaciously about what we as independent centers could do. You can do this. I know that you can do this. I know that you have the people. We certainly have the consultants all over the country who have done this for years and can help a center just like yours. But more than that, you have the heart and soul of the faith to serve abortion-minded women and save unborn lives and heal women's hearts with the gospel right here in Merced and beyond. If you start advertising, using keywords and adverts, and believe me, Google takes anybody's money. They will gladly take your money. If you do this, you will become one of the most effective centers in the nation to take a great state and a great area within that state with your mobile unit and with your center and with other centers working across the state to actually change what California does. Change abortion in California and send a message throughout this country that yes, in those most liberal states, with the strongest pro-abortion laws, we can find her first. And that is what I want to ask you. <laughs> to think about tonight. I'm not making the giving invitation. Usually I am, but I'm not. And I'm sure that it's going to be wonderful. But Debbie has already laid out a great course to take. And now we don't have the time to waste anymore. Since Roe v. Wade, over 63 million babies have been aborted. We can't let that continue. And not how amazing it is that God would choose this time to give us courageous Supreme Court justices and to overturn Roe v. Wade. It's as if he's opened his hand to us and said, I have gone forth for you all, for all of you who are in this life movement together. Trust me, look to me, believe me that I will provide and find her first and bring her life for herself and her unborn child. So thank you so much. It, it has been a joy to be with you all. And I just, I pray, I will take you in my prayers and back to Raleigh and to our other national offices and just say how great you are and what wonderful people are at work for life in California. Thank you.
it, it touches me deeply, even at this age, 60, it still touches me deeply. So Ruben, pastor, proud. Your mother left. Bless her heart for having the courage to not avoid you. Because you're here today, touching lives in the glory of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, give her a round of applause for this mother. And myself, I've been in the ministry 35 years. And how did I come to Christ? A woman. God used a woman to share the gospel with me. April 14, 1987. And I've been on fire for the Lord ever since. Amen, somebody? So we need you to continue to give the way you have been and the way you've continued to give all these years. Because there are young ladies that are hurting, and there are young men. I was a young man, 23 years old, with those experiences. And then again, like I said, a young lady shared the gospel with me. So I want to say this to every young lady out there that's a believer. And I'm going to say this with what a heart that, that just breaks. Please don't compromise your faith, your integrity, your purity. The woman that led me to Christ, something was radically different in her. And I was an out of control, undisciplined college baseball player when God put her in my path and her countenance radiated a, a, a glory that I didn't even know was glory until she told me she was a believer. But that young lady, Jamie Stricker was her name. She's a mom married today. Has kids, the whole nine yards. Beautiful woman. Saints and young ladies, please, if I can get down on one knee and the microphone would be there with me, I would beg you, do not compromise your faith in Christ. Amen? Amen. That was a weak amen. Amen? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this organization is a godsend. We just heard of the statistics of all that's been transpiring in this whole liberal state in which we live. But thank God for you. Thank God that we get to stand for Christ in the midst of a state that opposes life and Christ as well. But we get to stand. So I'm asking you, I get the privilege to ask you to go over and beyond what you typically get. And I, I, I make, make a pledge myself. I'm going to give to you. I didn't come prepared, but you'll see me in the next couple of days. This, everything that this ministry stands for, it, it touches me deeply. And I'd like to see men, I'd like to see men stand up and share their pain and what it was like for them to go through abortion with her. I was there with her, but I was lost. And I needed a different life to be a blessing to my life. So without further ado, I believe someone is kind of passing out the envelopes now. Uh, is it at the tables? Yes. You know what to do. You, you know what to do. So do what the Lord of Christ is upon your heart to do. And um, I'm going to leave this podium before I start on this Debbie. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone.
On behalf of Alpha, we want to thank you for your attendance tonight. There will be someone that will come around and collect the envelopes. We are grateful for your generosity, for your attendance. Um, we've been to quite a few of these over the years, and I can't remember one that was more enthusiastic, more loving, and uh, just felt right in the Lord's wheelhouse. So we want to thank you for that. Debbie, thank you for the work that you continue to do. You're a blessing to this community. This time we're going to close with prayer. You don't have to rush off. Go ahead and uh, fill out the envelope. Somebody will come by and collect them. Uh, but let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for tonight, Lord, and for these soldiers of Christ that have come here uh, on the front line of one of the greatest battles in the world right now. That is the battle for the lives of these babies. Lord, we pray for the 197 times the gospel is shared this year that, Lord, those that have accepted Christ and those that are still mulling over what they heard. But, God, there's a great need tonight, Father, and it is a battle in this state especially. Lord, but greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we know that victory comes through Christ. Lord, you knew us before the foundations of the world, before we were formed in our mother's womb. So we pray specifically, Lord, for the needs that we can find these girls first, that we can get uh, what is needed uh, to get on that internet and get those words associated that would drive these young ladies, uh, Lord, not to this pill and not to uh, any place except the Alpha. So we pray, God, for the needs and the funds and the wisdom to do this. We pray, Lord, for your blessings upon Alpha, the workers, and everyone that gives tonight. Bless our evening. We place it completely in your hand. May you be glorified, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Before you guys leave, we have a photo booth in the back. Step back here, they'll take your picture. If you'd like a printout, it's a $5 donation. And for every picture taken, $2 is going to go to the Alpha Ministry. So stop back, take a memento for the evening. It'll be a nice keepsake. And um, God bless you all.
Hey guys, DJ Lamont here with another episode of uh, Adventures with DJ Lamont Walker. Uh, provided sound uh, and uh, video and the photo booth for the uh, Alpha Pregnancy Help Center of Merced's Gala, their uh, 2022 edition. Uh, very, very powerful, um, very, very moving speakers. And um, this was a really, 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 uh, really moving event. Um, not kind of like the usually things that I post, but it was already in progress and I wanted to set up the live stream. So let me show you around the room really quick. And, um, and then um, we're in the transmission. Um, the event is over. Uh, our photo booth is going right now. And, um, you know, it's a no matter what you stand on the political scale, what they're doing is, um, is, is saving babies and it's definitely making an impact on women's and the fathers of, of the children as well. So let me show you the setup. All right. All right, so this is, we're at the Pavilion in Merced. Uh, this is the stage, have some uplighting going there. Have the DJ booth on the floor, uh, running on a flat screen there and also projecting on the back wall. There was a quartet earlier, but I didn't start the live stream early enough. And spin around here. Have some uplighting going in the back there. Very, very nicely decorated. Uh, ladies did the decor there, did the lighting up top. And down in the back, we have our photo booth. I'll take you around, around the scene here. Thank you for your help. Oh, thank you. We got the one and only DJ Eddie C back there uh, working the photo booth. Uh, we're doing $5 donations at the booth and $2 of every print goes to the Alpha Pregnancy Center. So we'll walk you back here and uh, sorry for the shaky camera. I really need to get a start using that gimbal. Well, this is our setup back here. You can hear my shoes. And so, prints are, prints are pretty quick. Um, we we're using the silver backdrop this time. We also have rose gold, we have gold, we have red, we have blue. Different um, colored themes and we're doing a little bit of uh, color wash on the wall, purple, to go along with the theme. Oh, go ahead. There's a mini me there. And so we have the setup there. We have a monitor in front so they can see themselves and make sure they're looking extra, extra good there. And then um, we take the picture, 
upload the pictures to the website and print them out as well. So this is available for events, for fundraising, um, for awareness, and um, just for fun. It's an interactive, fun, good time. So let me flip it back around. All right, guys, let me get over here. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for supporting. Stay tuned for the next adventure of Adventures with DJ Lamont. I believe our next adventure is going to be uh, OLM School tomorrow night. We'll be doing their, their dance. So we'll be live streaming then uh, showing you the dance. And then uh, Saturday we'll be in Modesto for the Alzheimer's Walk in Modesto. So stay tuned. If you can't get out and go, uh, you can travel, travel with us virtually. If you'd like to support or be a part of any of the events we do, if you'd like to be advertised at any of the events that we are, so we take our business with you and give them out on the business, the, the um, customized photo prints that we give out, that's available too. You can inbox me, message me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Have a blessed and safe week. Keep wanting to say weekend. I know it's Thursday, but it feels like Friday. Uh, God bless you and have a good night.